Good afternoon. I'm Kevin. I'm the CTO at LightSpark. I'm here with Jeremy, who happens to be one of the most brilliant engineers I've ever worked with. And a lot of the, a lot of the ideas that we're going to be talking about today are his, um, his child. So before we get into that, though, let me talk a little bit about who we are at LightSpark and what we're trying to achieve. So we're a relatively new company. We were founded about two years ago with a mission to really modernize money. And I know you've all heard that a million times, that blockchain is going to modernize money. And I've been part of that in the past. I worked on the DM project at Meta for about four years. And through that, really developed the conviction that the only way for this to happen is on the most neutral decentralized currency, and that's Bitcoin. And LightSpark is founded on that principle, uh, building on top of Bitcoin and Lightning, and using that as a way to actually modernize money, help it to really flow freely over the internet and have the internet native currency. And you can see in just the short amount of time that we have been around, we've developed quite a bit. We launched our initial product, um, the SDK and Predict, which really helps you onboard to Lightning, get up and running really quickly. You can think of it kind of like a Stripe-like interface for Lightning. We then launched UMA, which we're going to be talking about here today. And we've recently announced that Coinbase has gone live on our stack as well for Lightning. We have a, a really great set of partners that have onboarded with us so far. Um, but this is really just the beginning. We anticipate adding many, many more over the coming year. Um, I think many that you will have heard of and hopefully you'll be excited about. So what are we actually trying to achieve here? So right now, money has really been built with a lot of barriers around it. Sometimes those barriers are geographic, where it's actually difficult to move money cross borders. Take ACH, for example. I can't send an ACH payment to someone in China. Um, really, the payment trails were built very localized, where they don't interoperate with each other. And to do so ends up being pretty expensive. You look at even card payments within the US, where you're going to be paying 3% um, in card fees. Money also moves very slowly. We're in the internet age now. Money should move instantaneously. But if I do an ACH payment to Jeremy, it's going to take three days. It won't work over the um, past Friday at 5 p.m. Um, you're going to have to wait for business days. So that doesn't have to be that way, though. We are now in the modern age. Money should move fluidly. And currently, there are barriers around money as well because it's closed. Only banks really have access to these rails directly. But again, it doesn't need to be that way. We can have an open system, and that's what we're trying to build at LightSpark. So it's time to break down these barriers and move to modern payments. Um, move from kind of the dial-up era to the broadband era, where money is really slow to where it's moving quickly. And it's basically instantaneous. It's almost free on an open, interoperable network. So what does it look like to build this solution? Well, we are trying to create this open money network for the internet, where money really moves just like data moves on the internet today. Anywhere a TCP packet can go, money should be able to go. This should be truly global. It should be 24-7, 365. You shouldn't have business hours only. You should be able to move money when you want to move it. It should be extremely low cost, ideally negligible fees, and an open, interoperable protocol where anyone can plug into it. It's not just the banks. It's not just one app. Anything can talk to one another using the same protocol. So to walk you through a little bit how this works, um, Jeremy's going to talk through a little bit about universal money addresses. Cool. Thanks, Kevin. This is a universal money address, or UMA for short. An UMA is like an email address, but for money. UMA is global and open source. And what I mean when I say open source is that UMA was built on top of really great open standards like LNURL and Lightning addresses, for those familiar with Lightning. What I mean when I say global is that UMA can send from any currency in the world to any currency in the world, whether that's fiat or crypto or whatever you can come up with. The way that this works is essentially what we've been seeing around the world is that there's been some pretty good real-time rails that have been popping up, but only domestically in certain regions. So if you think about like RTP or FedNow in the US, 
or PIX or UPI, but as soon as you leave those regions, you're stuck with old Rails again that have all the problems that Kevin just described. So we view Lightning as a way to bridge all of these new real-time payment systems that have been popping up, and that's what we'll be talking about today. So UMA is, like Kevin said, 24-7 on, super cheap compared to traditional remittances, and like really global between any currency. So what does this look like in practice? Uh, this is real screenshots from a live app that offers UMA. This is Zappo Bank. Uh, if you go to the send screen in the Zappo Bank app, you'll see an UMA address option. You can type in a receiver address. It'll tell you what currencies they support and at what sort of currency exchange rates. Uh, it also shows you the fees involved in the transaction. So in this case, you'll see that the sender is sending to Ripio. Uh, Ripio is based, well, one country that they operate in is Argentina. So this is going to send to Argentine pesos and it settles instantly. And what you'll see is that on the receiver side, in the Ripio app, you actually just receive Argentine pesos. So you don't even need to care about Bitcoin as part of this transaction. You don't need to know what the rails were that were used. You just receive whatever currency you want to receive in real time immediately at super low cost. So under the hood, what's happening here, let's imagine a case where an exchange in the US is sending USD to Brazil and the receiver is going to receive Brazilian real. It's actually pretty simple. What happens is that if I'm the sender, I send USD to my VASP, they convert that money to Bitcoin, it travels over Lightning to the receiving VASP, who then can off-ramp it to BRL and send it to their receiver. Um, what we really need and what UMA provides is a communication layer on top of Lightning to negotiate things like fees, exchange rates, and compliance features that regulated institutions need to be able to participate in the Lightning Network. And so that's where UMA steps in. Let's check out the code here. So I'm going to tempt the demo gods a bit, so bear with me. Um, you know, this worked five minutes ago, so surely it'll work right now, right? Let's run it. Um, and this is a, a replit that's a, a sample uh, VASP that actually is doing real UMA transactions. It's also publicly hosted, so anyone can go look at this after, after the demo. Um, what you're seeing here is that we're connected to a LightSpark account, which provides a Lightning node implementation and a really simple API to connect to that, uh, to that node. And I'm going to create an UMA. I'll just use my initials. And I'm going to lower the, the fees just for, for fun here. And so now I was credited with 100 US dollars in my balance. If I want to send that, I can send to Mexican pesos. Let's say I want to send, uh, I want the receiver to get exactly 10 Mexican pesos. It tells me how much that's going to cost me in USD. I click continue. It'll show me any fees associated with it, the locked in exchange rate. At this point, what's cool is that the receiver uh, exchange has locked in this rate for a certain amount of time, and that's tied into the lightning invoice that you'll see in a second. When I click send, the payment worked. All right, the demo gods are happy with me so far. Uh, but we're going to see, so you, you'll see here that the, the receiver received 10 Mexican pesos. And you'll notice here that not once in that demo did I mention Bitcoin to the user. And that's like a choice. Of course, on either side, it could be Bitcoin, it could be USDC, it could be ETH, it could be anything that the exchanges are able to convert to and from Bitcoin. So let's attempt to get demo gods one more time. I'm going to try receiving. So we'll open up this, this tester where it'll show a little bit more detail about what's going on in the transaction. So I'm going to paste this. I'm going to say I want this to succeed. And we're going to send. Cool. All right, it succeeded. Uh, so what's happening here? Um, uh, if you're familiar with LNURL, a lot of this will look really familiar, but I'm assuming that most folks aren't. And essentially with this payment flow, there's two primary messages. The first is sort of tell me some info about the receiver. I want to send to bob at exchange.com. And the exchange will say, all right, here are the currencies that Bob can receive, and these are the exchange rates that he can receive at. And then the second message is just, OK, I want to send this much money. And so you can see that here. Uh, in the first request, 
It's just a GET request to a URL that maps to the UMA address. So this is uglier than usual because I'm using Replit here, and so the domain is like super long. But normally, this would just be you know Bob at Exchange.com, and the URL that gets constructed for that first GET would be uh, Exchange.com slash well-known slash LNURLP slash Bob, um, and there's also some metadata appended to the end so that the receiving VASP can I identify and also authenticate that the sending VASP is who they say they are. In the response, like I mentioned, here are the currencies that the receiver supports. So this is my replit receiver. Uh, you'll notice that the replit receiver can receive all sorts of stuff. These multipliers are the number of milli satoshis per single unit of the receiving currency. So in the example of USD, this is saying that there are like 22,800 millisats per one US cent. And these exchange rates are hard coded and it's a demo, so, you know, bear with me on that. But uh, essentially, the receiver is saying, like, all right, you can send any of these currencies and here's how much it'll cost. In addition to that, there's this compliance blob. And this is what I mentioned allows us to get regulated institutions onto the network. What this does is the receiver is saying uh, whether or not they're subject to the travel rule. They're signing it in a way that only they can sign. And so if I know the, the sender's public key, I can val validate that this signature is actually coming from them. Uh, and then the last bit here is this, this payer data field which is the receiver asking for information that they require from the sender to complete the transaction for whatever regulatory requirements they have. So in this case, really the, the receiver is saying, I only need the identifier, so I only need to know who the sending UMA address is, but optionally, I'll take the name and email of the sender also for display purposes or something like that. Next, they'll show, you know, the sending UI will show some UI that shows, says, all right, here's the, the currencies you can send. Uh, here's how much it'll cost. The sender then types an amount and clicks send. And here's what the pay request looks like. So this is saying, I'm going to send one US cent. It's always denominated in the lowest unit, the smallest unit of the receiving currency. Uh, and I want it to end up in USD. And I'm also going to include the payer data that you asked for. So in this case, I'm saying, this is the sender that's sending this transaction. And again, here's some compliance info. You'll notice the stuff that I mentioned before. So things like, hey, yeah, I've KYC'd this user. You can trust them. They're legit. I'm vouching for them. Uh, there's also the node pub key and UTXOs of the receiving node on Lightning. This is optional for uh, things like compliance checks and AML sanction screening for that node. And there's also a callback so that you can get some information after the transaction's complete about, yes, it didn't go, indeed go over these UTXOs for these lightning channels. In the response, the most important thing in the payrec response is this PR field, which is the same as with LNURL, but this is just a lightning invoice. And what's happening here is that this lightning invoice uh, will, is a promise that the receiver is going to exchange whatever is paid in this transaction for whatever currency at the exact rate they had agreed upon. And this invoice has an expiration time, and that's the amount of time that they're willing to lock in the quote that they'll honor on the receiving side. So what's nice about this is that as a receiver, if I make this invoice only last a minute, I only have to honor that quote for a minute because if the sender tries to then pay the invoice, it won't go through after the quote's expired. Um, in the response, you'll also get, all right, like, what was the final conversion rate? So if it's changed between that first estimate and when I actually lock it in, it might move a little bit so you'll get an updated rate. And again, some compliance info on the other side. Once the payment's received, that's it. Uh, again, I mentioned there's optional post-transaction data to say these are the channels that actually ended up going over. But that's really it. It's those two main messages to say, Tell me about this receiver. What currencies can they receive? Give me the exchange rates and the fees associated with this, and then, OK, I want to pay this amount. So let's go back to the slides.
Cool. So what you just saw, that demo was built in JavaScript, but we have a bunch of open SDKs. This is all open source, including the, the protocol itself is public on our GitHub. The uh, link here has all of our SDKs. We support these languages and more if you include all the other JVM languages. But we really want to build this with the community. So Uma is not something that is owned by LightSpark. In fact, LightSpark doesn't touch any of these transactions unless one of the senders or receivers uses us for Lightning. We're a Lightning provider. We help, it, help make it super easy to use Lightning. We also wrote these UMA SDKs, but we don't want to own UMA. We want UMA to be a community-owned project, and it's fully open. And in fact, we've had lots of open source contributions from folks at partners and exchanges and stuff like that. So today, these are the, the VASPs that are live on UMA. We're constantly launching more, but we have pretty good global coverage. We're really excited about some of the names in the pipeline as well, but these are the ambitious, brave souls who have journeyed with us for this first launch. We're excited to, to see how the network grows and, and kind of gets more global coverage from here. I'm going to hand it back over to Kevin to talk about what's possible today and also next with UMA. Thank you, Jeremy. So why does UMA actually matter and what is useful about it? So let's take a few examples. So let's say that you and I go out to eat. We go get some amazing barbecue here in Texas, maybe some pulled pork, some ribs, maybe even some cornbread. Um, I'm, I'm kind of losing track here. I, I'm really getting hungry right now. Um, but maybe we go out to dinner. We split the tab. Um, you pay for it. Let's imagine I'm coming from Europe. Um, I want to pay you back. So we could do that dance where we both pull out our phones, see do we have any common apps that can talk to each other. I might have Cash App. Jeremy might have Facebook payments or Venmo or something else. Um, but even then, even if we could find a common app, I want to pay in euros. He wants to receive in US dollars. Well, that's where UMA comes in. It's this open standard. You can talk between any of these payment apps that you might have. I can pay in my native currency. Jeremy can receive in his. And it just magically works. He'll receive US dollars. I will send euros, pesos, whatever. And our apps can talk to each other. We don't have to do that dance every time we want to pay each other back. Or how about a more serious example? Let's say I have a loved one who goes overseas, has a medical emergency. They need money in the country that they're in to pay for some emergency surgery. I should be able to send that money and have them receive it instantaneously. They shouldn't have to worry about a big chunk of it being taken up by fees or have to wait because it's the weekend and you can't do swift transfers on the weekend. They should be able to receive it immediately and have it in their bank account so they can pay for whatever medical emergency they have. Or another example. Let's say I'm a driver for a ride sharing app. Typically, I have to wait until the end of two weeks when I actually get paid. I have to hope that my bills haven't accumulated too much so that I can afford to get some food or go out to party or something like that. Um, as you can tell, I'm obviously a big partier. Um, <laughs> if you knew me, you would know that's not true at all. Um, I'm probably the most boring person you've ever met. Um, but let's, let's pretend in this imaginary world that I'm going out partying and I need some money for that. Now I'm driving for a ride sharing company. I should be able to get paid as I'm doing the work. Not even at the end of the trip, but in real time as I'm driving for every single mile, money should be able to go into my account. That is possible with an internet native currency. You can stream the money as I'm driving. So how can you get involved with this? You can start building on UMA today. We have a lot of great partners that Jeremy showed that are on it already, and we are adding many, many more. And you can go to our UMA developer docs. You can use the fantastic Replit demo that Jeremy showed. And you can start to plug in UMA into whatever you're building and start to have access to the next wave of the financial future. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we will be at, at the back um, at the end of here to answer any questions and talk through anything with you. Um, really appreciate your time today.